All right, problem five, we have R is the region in the first quadrant enclosed by the graphs of f of x, which is equal to the square root of the cosine of x, and the graph of g of x, which is equal to e to the x, and the vertical line, x equals pi over two. Let's first label those. So this is the vertical line, x equals pi over two. This will be the square root. So, f of x equals the square root of the cosine of x. And this one up here will be the g of x function, which is equal to e to the x. Make sure you know those basic functions. I mean, you may, have, may not need to know this off the top of your head, but you need to know e to the x. Then you could just, you know, just use process of elimination. OK, so we have to find an integral expression that gives the area of r, so this area. OK, so this is probably stuff um, covered near the end of your course where you have to learn um, how to represent and find areas between curves. So this will be equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2. And here we have the top function, g of x, minus, we got to take away this because um, if we just simply integrated, like if we simply integrated g of x, which is equal to e to the x, we would get, you know, we would get the entire thing. We would get this as well. But we got to subtract the semicircle sort of, look, the semicircle area thing. So we have to subtract the square root of the cosine of x. And that's it. We, again, we don't have to evaluate this. That's all we need for that one. Um, yeah, how much more, not much to it, part B. All right, find the volume of the solid generated when R is revolved about the x-axis. Okay, so we find, want to find a solid revolution. We want to find this when you're going, when you're spinning around the x-axis like that. So let's remember what um, a volume is. Oh, well, what, well, what, well, what a volume of the solid revolution would be? Remember, that would be, equal essentially you're always going to create a cylinder and for that it's be pi r squared but since this one has a hole what we're going to do is take pi integrated from you know a to b and we like to set up a large radius expression square that minus the small radius expression and in this case since we're revolving around a horizontal axis it'll be be with respect to x. Um, so what we're all, what we're doing here is we're gonna have our our big radius will be this guy. It'll be the one over here. Because um, remember the the big radius is the one that's farther away from the axis of revolution, which is the x-axis. The small radius. Let me grab a different color pen. Be this interior one right here. So we set this equal to where e of x is the large radius, and and the square root of the cosine of x is the small radius, and we just essentially have to evaluate it. The key is setting it up correctly. So let's go do that. V equal to pi from zero to pi over two large r of x, which is e to the x squared minus small r of x squared. Working our way through, we get pi times the integral from zero to pi over two. e to the x squared, we just can write that as e to the two x. The square root squared, just the square roots cancel, so this is just minus the cosine of x dx. Evaluate when we find the antiderivative. So you go pi times the antiderivative, antiderivative e to the 2x is e to the 2x over 2, because we just divide by the derivative of 2x. The antiderivative of the cosine of x would be the sine of x. We evaluate this 
from zero to pi over two, and then multiply by pi. So pi times e to the two pi over two, or just e to the pi over two minus the sine of pi over two. The sine of pi over two is just zero, or no, sorry, it's just one. Don't make that mistake like I just did. And then minus e to the two x, or e to the two x evaluated at zero. So minus e to the zero over two minus sine of zero when that's zero. Working the way through, pi times one half or e to the pi over two minus one minus e to the zero is one, so minus one half minus zero. So minus one half minus three halves times pi. So we get essentially pi times e to the pi over two minus three halves. And again, this is not a non-calculator problem. So this is all you have to do. You don't have to evaluate it and get a like decimal approximation. Part C, all right. This is usually one that students find the most challenging on these exams. And that's where we have to find um, the volume that's gonna be generated with cross sections. And these cross sections in this case are perpendicular to the X axis which are semicircles. So this is gonna be a weird looking thing. Um, let me see if I can draw this somehow. So, so forgive me in advance if I draw a weird looking drawing. So what's going on here is this thing, think about what's going on in the three dimensional plane. This is our X axis, this is our Y, so be z. And with our function, we have this will be our this is the um the f of x is square root of the cosine of x. So this is f. And then the other one looks like this, something like that. Up to pi over two, right? This function up here is g. Now semicircles, so the cross sections are gonna look like this. Again, they're gonna be perpendicular to this axis or parallel to the y axis. So they're semicircles, so they're gonna be coming out like, like this sort of thing. Doop, doop. Does it mean like some dome looking thing? Um, so let's look at like a cross section um, or even then this last biggest one would be like, so I don't know if that helps, but you're good at three, if you're good at geometry and mentally visualizing this, that's essentially what's going on here. Um, anyways, so um, a one cross section would be again a vertical line. You know, the vertical line, the top is um, the G function, the bottom is the F function. So the base of this, if you look at it, at the semicircle, you know, is, you know, this part down here. We're looking at this sort of thing. To get this length, so to get the a length of, a, of the base, you would do G minus F. This bottom part would be G minus F. 
And remember the area of a semicircle is, you know, one half pi r squared. Now the radius of this going in half would then just be half of this. So the radius, so the distance of this again, from here to here, that would just be, that's the radius. That would just be one half of G minus F. And again, let me actually like, so this, so I'm referring to this, this would be like one of these cross sections, like, I probably should have made this bigger, probably would have looked a little better. It's, it's, it's got, it'll do for now. Um, or maybe more, I'll work on this. Um, so then this, we just use this formula for that. So the area of these cross sections would be one half pi times this radius square. So one times G minus F squared. So to generate that, our volume would be the integral from zero to pi still, or zero to pi over two still of one half times pi g minus f squared. All that squared. Make sure you put the squared in there. Dx. Or let me let's actually let me write g of x minus f of x. And actually, I just caught a mistake, luckily. Um, the, the, the one half has the air, the radius is one half of this. So I got to put this, um, let me rewrite this. Well, actually, last no, I didn't do that. I kind of, well, I kind of did that wrong. So G minus F, I got to make sure I put the one half inside this squared part because that's what's being squared. So the radius squared would be this whole quantity squared. If I did the radius squared, this whole thing squared. So in here, you'll have a one half pi on the outside times G minus F. And let me, let me put G of X minus F of X. You don't lose points off of that over two inside the parentheses, all that squared times dx. That'll be the proper integral. And that'll be your solution. Um, I, I actually really like these problems. Um, I know some students find them tough, but they're very, they're very satisfying once you get them, but you gotta practice and um, really maybe use some 3D like, um, rendering or like use your textbook images to because the, dr drawing this and on paper is kind of hard to visualize especially when you're first learning this it's going to have a very good three-dimensional representation so you really understand it but all right i hope that helps but let me know if you have any questions any feedback is you know is, is appreciated so good luck